I am really excited today because I have actually a very dear friend. We've known each other for a long time. We're in the same circles. We do a lot of the same things. And um, he's from my neck of the woods. I grew up in Ohio and he's from Kentucky. And he is just an amazing young man. He's also developed and teaches systems and strategies for treating high fear patients, sometimes affectionately referred to as Dr. Checklist. This lovely dentist speaks across the United States on topics related to systems management, clinical efficiency, dental technology, medical emergencies, treating anxious patients, and leadership. He is also the founder and owner of StreamDent Software. Please help me welcome my dear friend, William J. Moorhead. BJ, how are you doing? And it's a pleasure. How are you today? I am doing great. I'm doing great, Dr. DMD. I love it. You are something um, really special, BJ. We've known each other for a long time, and I know you have a heart of gold. And when we started talking about, you know, what would be our topic today, and you told me that you treat high fear patients, and it's it's really part of your expertise and part of your practice uh, philosophy. I was not surprised at all. You're one of the kindest human beings I've ever met. Okay. Always, always just a gentleman. And and I don't know you. I I feel like you've always looked out for the the little guy or the guy standing in the corner. You just have a heart of gold. And is that where that comes from? Like how you started to get really involved in treating high fear patients? Because not everybody wants, not everybody has that as their avatar. How did that all come about, BJ? Well, I've always been an anxious patient in a medical setting to start with. And coming out of dental school, we were in, I graduated from uh, University of Louisville, and we were given free CE for the first year. And by coincidence, uh, while I was waiting, this was in the years when you took the boards and you had to wait for the results to be able to get your license. So you're sitting on your rear end all summer long waiting. Uh, and they offered a course in hypnosis uh, and hypnosis in, in, for dental use and in dentistry. Uh, I took the course, played with it a little bit, uh, but that got me interested in the fear angle. We taught patients relaxation techniques uh, back before video was a big thing, we borrowed some uh, professional cameras and made videos for our patients to watch to learn relaxation techniques. And back 22 years ago, when the docs program started, uh, I took their program and did oral sedation for nine years. Uh, and then uh, myself and another dentist here in Kentucky talked to a couple of the University of Kentucky professors into starting an IV program for general dentists at University of Kentucky. They ran that program for about a decade and it kind of fizzled. Uh, both of the guys that were teaching it retired. And more recently, uh, myself and a Dr. Darren Greenwell here in Kentucky have started another program uh, for teaching IV sedation. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. There's a couple things that are really cool. Um, the hypnosis thing is intriguing to me. Okay, because I, I'm just, you know, out of you listening, I was just hypnotized about a month ago. And it was, and I thought that was so woo-woo. I was like, okay, well, it was part of a coaching program I'm in, right? So I'm like, ah, oh, all right, I'll, I'll check that box. And I did it before my retreat. And actually, I got to tell you, I like a breakthrough. So, I mean, this is, you did this, when was this that you you did that? I mean, gosh, how many years ago? I can't reveal that information. I would tell my age. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just say, it's quite a while hey, back. What you say it was in the previous century. The previous century, yes. At least 20 <laughs> years ago. Yeah, at least 20, maybe maybe 25, right? I know. But I mean, that's so cool that you were so ahead of the uh, ahead of the curve back then. And that actually they were teaching that in dental school, like uh, kudos to Kentucky. I mean, and, and Louisville. I mean, that's that is really really cool. Um, but I love the fact, and I think that so many wonderful things come from our own experiences, right? So you were a fearful patient, and so you saw a need, you felt the need, and you decided to do something about it. And now that you're bringing that back, I love that because that's I've, the future, right? I've got to tell on myself too. I did the oral sedation thing for years. When I have to have blood drawn or anything IV related, I'm 
anxious enough that I have them lay me down so they don't have to pick me up. Oh, so my I God. Didn't, I didn't do, I didn't learn IV sedation for probably eight, 10 years because I was anxious about the idea of of blood, even though I'm a dentist and I'm doing surgery and extracting teeth. It was, it was a different thing. And uh, it, it, doctors, it's a whole different thing working on somebody else versus working, being worked on yourself. Yeah. Uh, it, it's the analogy of receiving the mandibular block versus giving the mandibular block. It's a lot easier on the giving it. Oh my gosh, that's so funny. I would think, you know, I'm a pretty decent patient. And so it's funny to me that you're saying that you 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 don't mind giving the block, but you don't want to receive the block. And that I would think all dentists would be a pretty good patient, but I'm that's a that is a total misnomer and I am totally, you know, wrong on that, aren't aren't I? I had to have some perio surgery last year, some grafts, and uh I use the product onset, which is sodium bicarbonate for uh buffering the anesthetic and it takes the sting out. And when I went to the periodontist, I took my little onset pen and, and activated it for them. So I would feel oh my gosh. Well, that's typical. That's typical. Yeah. Let me show you how to do that. Let me have a mirror while we're doing it so I can just watch everything. Oh my no, gosh. No, 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 no. Not going there. No. You're not going to go that far. You're not going to go that far. But well, okay. So why would, why would a general dentist, so you're, pr you're putting this program together. Why would a general dentist want to add IV sedation to their practice? That's an easy one. Uh, and this is this just so fits with your angle uh, with dental entrepreneurs about the future of dentistry. Mm -hmm. Almost one out of three patients are fearful. So general dentists, which is 95% of dentists, are fighting this fear angle all the time. That's problem number one. Mm -hmm. Problem number two, for patients that really do need to be sedated, they, there are so few general dentists that do it. So if you want to position your practice for the future of dentistry, it's just a natural. The cases are larger. You're looked at as a leader in, in your area because when you learn IV sedation, you're going to have tougher cases. Mm -hmm. You're going to learn the skills. You're going to go to the CE. To, you're going to want to. You're going, you're going to enjoy it. It really energizes your practice. Now, yeah, you're going to work harder, but you're going to love it. Wow. You know, that's so cool because I just, I, I mean, I was just practicing up until about a year ago and we did not do general uh, sedation in the practice. We didn't do IV sedation. We would send our patients to the, I believe we sent them to the periodontist and they would do the IV uh, sedation there. And then uh, maybe that my boss would go over and do the, the clinical end just very rarely. But that's just, first of all, inconvenient for the patient. It's a big to do to get the schedules together. And I mean, is it that hard? Is it that much more involved uh, to do sedation dentistry? And why would anybody be afraid of learning about that? Well, it is a 90 to 100 hour course. There's six, the, the ADA requires a didactic only, the didactic portion, be okay. 60 hours of training. Um, and on the on the uh, giving end of the course, it's it was really fun when we developed the course initially to develop all that material quickly. Um, but it, it, you really do learn when you teach. Uh, and then I, with that, I've, I, I've dropped the ball and forgotten part of your question. So we ask it if you can remember it. Yeah, well, I'm just saying, why would anybody, you know, want to, why wouldn't they want to get involved? Is it that involved? I mean, why wouldn't they want to take the course? So you say it's, 60 it's, hours. It's a big course. Uh, our cost for our course for AGD members, uh, and by the way, if you join the ADD for $500, you save $1,000. So the course cost is like twelve seven fifty. dollars Okay. Uh, and then you have to buy some equipment to be able to get into it. Uh but once you do that, the average case sizes are so much larger. And I don't know if I mentioned, we were talking earlier before the podcast, I don't think I mentioned this, but the average uh, dental patient needs a couple of thousand dollars worth of work for every year they haven't been to the dentist. Yeah, yeah. Well, and the other thing is, that the, 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 the thing that strikes me also is that it's got to be a more relaxed uh, state when your patient's 
cooperating and not so anxious. I can't even imagine how much easier that would be for me to be able to do, you know, a periodontal treatment if the patient was sound asleep and not fidgeting or worried or because I mean, we that vibe comes off on us. We can't help it when that person is, you know, uh, jumping and and very nervous and just to be able to get it all done in, in one sitting. And I know so many people that don't go to the dentist because they can't be put to sleep because mm-hmm. it's not that it's not that common. Like you were saying, it actually does give you the expert status in your community, the thought leader status, me status, the person that is forward thinking um, compared to somebody else down the street that still is doing it the old way. I will. I, I get. I have some GPs that send me patients for sedation because they can't handle them, mm-hmm. and occasionally I'll have a patient come in that has nothing to do with sedation. I see another dentist work because of that. I'll often be sitting next to a patient, new patient that is high fear and talking. And I, I, we take photos of everything to be able to show them what's going on. Uh, we have an interview process that I have documented well in Streambent, my software product that goes through the chief complaint, the motivating factors, the obstacles and guides the dentist through the process so that you're better able to uh, motivate the patient to get them healthy. Mm-hmm. But we'll be sitting and looking at a photo on the screen, an occlusal photo of, of the arch. And, and I have to point out this work that is really subpar. But I can honestly say to them, I do see some patients that come from Dr. So-and-so. And I want to tell you, he or she does excellent work. But if you've got the environment to where you as the patient can't be able to handle sitting there and be able to cooperate to help them, they can't give you the quality of work that you want and that you need. Mm-hmm. And that's true. Yeah. That That is really true. And it could be so daunting, for, um, especially if it's a big case. And I, I could think of so many that they have to come back like, eight times, right? I mean, if, especially a long time. Uh, right. that's, a, that's a long time, long time away from work. You know, I mean, I think everybody would like to wave a magic wand to wake up and it's all over and you go home and Monday you're okay and you're back, you know, you're back if you, if you need to be back at work or back to doing your normal things. Um, does that, so like, are you doing, like, would you do top and bottom arch? How does that work? I'm just curious. I'm in Kentucky where it's rumored that the toothbrush was invented because any place before would have been the teeth brush. Yes. Uh, so I I have to do too many cases that I don't like to do where I have to uh, do full arch extractions or full mouth extractions. Uh, I've used uh, Dr. Jack Turbifil's technique, his uh, branching technique for making dentures to where I can be able to slam dunk, be able to insert uh, immediate dentures that I know work from day one. And I've used that technique all the years that I've done sedation. Uh, I can be able to do full arch cases with crown and bridge. I don't place dental implants, but for sedation implant, I'm sorry, for implants, sedation are just a slam dunk. Oh yeah. That my gosh. I mean, again, I, I would imagine that that is standard procedure, especially if you're doing, you know, a couple of implants and you'd like to get them done at the same time, but not necessarily because I wonder what the percentage is of dentists that actually do IV sedation. Do you have any idea, like in your area, for instance, you know, in your community? How I think you- the general dentist is less than 2%, but I don't, but I'm not certain of that. Statistic. Well, if anything less than five or 10% is not very, I mean, that's low. That is really low. Can you we consider the benefits? And a large number of young dentists are learning implants now. They're learning them in dental school, which is fantastic. Yes. But it's an invasive procedure. And if you want to do it and do it right and be able to make it a profit center, the sedation is just slam dunk. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how do you do it safely where you don't put yourself and the patients at risk? Is it through your course? I mean, I would imagine your course is going to bring you back to dental school and learn a lot of the, um, a lot of things that you, you touched on in dental school. Is that correct? The first weekend of the course, uh, my students will normally say, I feel like I'm back in dental school. But the, the, the real joy of what I hear from our students is you guys really make it practical. We're both practicing dentists instead of in academics. And so we teach the academic part, I know just as well, 
as the the dental prof, dental school professors. But then we show you step by step. I, I use the things for my software product from Streamdent, uh, I, and I use other standardized approaches to where it can become a very methodical, automatic process that doesn't. No, no, no stress, no stress for the patient, no stress for the team, no stress for the dentist. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a wonderful way to practice dentistry, isn't it? Um, for sure. and, and also to grow in your profession. I, I do think that is the, the new, you know, something that young dentists need to look at. Do they don't, do they get any of that education in the dental schools at all? I guess they, it's, you know, rare. You, it's very rare. Okay. They probably talk talk about like that's the, the the one day they get for hygiene, the other the the day they get for ortho, the day they get for endo or whatever, right? I mean, it's very hard to get all of that curriculum in dental school. And then again, you want to when you're going to do this and, and commit to it, um, you want to make sure that you know that sixty hours is going to come in real handy because you're going to have the confidence. And and I think that's part of um, you know people think how hard it is, but you just, once you commit and they have someone like you to teach and you have a teaching partner, is that right for your and course? Dr. Darren Greenwell out of Radcliffe, Kentucky. Okay. And just to note, it's a 60 hour didactic, but then you also have to have clinical experience with 20 patients. So we bring all the dentists in for a couple of weekends and uh, have them work. We, we saw 25 patients this past weekend. Wow. Yeah. And how do you find those patients? Is it just you know, word of mouth or? We we have really been blessed to partner with a, with Cornerstone Dental Seminars out of Louisville. Uh, they, got, they teach placing dental implants on charity patients. Oh. So uh, we use their clinic. Some of the time we're sedating their patients that are having implants placed. Sometimes we're working on other uh, charity patients in in that same clinic. Wow. So you're actually doing good while teaching sedation. That's yes. beautiful. That's beautiful. Yeah, they used to say, you know, you know, what side of the toothbrush are you using? You, you know what side to, to to use. And you know, it's 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 pretty it's just a gift when you can give that the gift of having that kind of intensive work done and knowing that the patient's going to, the patient has just got so much, has so much confidence in um, taking that step, making that, taking the, 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 and the courage to actually sit for that appointment because they know that when they wake up, they're going to be in, in great shape and they are in good hands. Yes. Yeah. Well, I think you're making a difference in, in dentistry. I love that um, you have come up with this this course, and this is something you've been doing for a long time. So it, it's like you are um, you're teaching the te the uh, teaching the um, the teachers, right, or something like that. It would be dentists are always they have to have a little bit of experience before they get to your course. Is that correct? I mean, do you, would you like to have like new grads here, or would you like to have someone that has a little uh, experience? We're in we're in our first class now, and of the class, two of them. Have practiced less than ten years. Okay, okay, but that's and that's and, and they place dental implants, so it's a natural. Yes, it's a natural. It's a natural, and and just to have you be their teacher, I think would be so so great. So I know that you've got some patients. You you've been that that guy that um that dentist, and people come from all over when they hear that you are highly um highly expert at treating the fearful patient. You can tell their your story to them, which probably makes them feel a little better. Like, gosh, if if, if Doctor Moorhead was a little nervous, and you know he's a practicing dentist, I guess I gotta just step up and I'll be okay. But what happens if you've got a patient? Say, I'm just gonna say you got a patient happens to be their birthday, and somebody gave them uh, a, a gift of a dental um, exam, dental X-rays. And um, maybe their first procedure uh, to them. What would you do when you walk in the room, uh, BJ, to to calm that patient down? Well, I want to put them at ease. And by coincidence, I have a very unique happy birthday. I'm allowed to tell that one of my patients is Nick or is George Clooney's mom. I got to do a full mouth rehab on her like 17 years ago. Uh, and when we did the entire finished the entire, it was a full mouth rehab. This it's, is Rosemary Clooney? 
This is uh, no Rosemary was George's is was George's aunt. Oh, that's right. That's right. I love it because you don't. And Nina yeah. included. Okay, so, I love it. Uh, so after we finished Nina's entire case, I wanted to do something special for my team. Uh, they live about 45 minutes away from my practice. It's not unusual for people to drive an hour or so to me because there's there's not many sedation dentists in this area. And uh, so Nina comes in and I, when we finished everything, I said, I want to do something special for my team. And there is the Rosemary Clooney Museum in the town where Nick and Nina, George's parents, live. I asked if after I take them to a little bistro to eat, if Nick and Nina would give us a personal tour of the Rosemary Clooney Museum. And they did. Oh. I have for years, using the checklist approach with Streamden, I have hired a high school student to come in the office after school. They use checklists and they restock, they sterilize, and they uh, set up, it, it, leave things in packages, but they set up for the next day's procedures. Okay. By coincidence, that day, my... Dental assistant, part time, the high school student turned eighteen, and George's dad, at the end of the tour, sang this version of "Happy Birthday" that I'm going to share with you. That I that I have a number of times walked into a an operatory and sung to a patient, and, and a perfect would be the new patient that came in and they're all anxious. But the the, the birthday song goes like this. For today is your birthday, that's what I've been told. What a wonderful birthday, you're one more year old. On your cake, there'll be candles all lighted for you. And the whole world is singing, happy birthday to you. Oh, I love, thank you for singing that to our audience today. Because what our audience may not know is that I would say for the past five years on my birthday, I get a phone call from you and you sing that birthday song to me. And it always makes me smile from ear to ear. And I've saved the first one, BJ, uh, just so that I, I, can, I can hear it. I know. Yeah, I it's so beautiful. Oh, gosh. You're just one of them. You know, again, back to the beginning of this podcast, you're one of the, the most amazing guys I know in dentistry. You've got a kind heart. And I love that you're doing something to change the world of dentistry and 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 actually promote the future of dentistry. So tell us where where do they find your course? Because I know that a lot of people that are listening say they might want to put this into their practice. Again, it's a practice builder, a profit center, and it would pay for itself, honestly, in the first you know one or two times of the patients that you see, because again, the cases are big. So where do they find you and where do they find your course information? The website is IV Sedation Training for Dentists dot com iv sedation training for dentists dot com okay well we'll have uh, that in the show notes and the and my software product is stream dent uh like streamline dentistry and that's stream dot com stream and dent. my phone number is five zero two five zero nine one five seven zero that's a google voice number that rings to my office and my uh, cell phone for after hours uh, and my email is dr.m, like Dr. Moorhead, dr.m at streamdent.com. Oh, okay. S-T-R-E-A-M-D-E-N-T. Well, that is good to know. We will be in touch with you. And I'm hoping that we will be able to find more dentists that dive in, dive deeper into this program and this protocol to help people that are fearful of dentists to get the care they need. So thank you so much for doing this for us today and for being on our podcast today, BJ. 